first of all, I just would like to say that there's a, a structure of law regarding how taxes are implemented in our state, which was passed by voters in our state. It's not the county government that imposes that structure of tax. It's our voters that approved it via Measure 47 and 50. Uh, it requires an increase in the real market, or the maximum assessed value at 3% a year, unless the real market value drops below that and the uh, appraised value becomes what the real market value is. Taxes in our county haven't went up and up in e each year. Uh, they've been declining up until this year for the last five years. Um, <clears throat> I will say that there have been additional taxes placed on the tax roll, all which are required by state law to be approved by voters. We don't have the ability to, to impose a tax unilaterally. It's required that the voters of our county approve those things. Mr. Peterson may disagree with the fact that voters approve them and may not appreciate it, but our voters have weighed in and approved those taxes. Um, with regard to the comments regarding Commissioner Smith, since he's not here to defend himself, I will say that Mr. Ann uh, Peterson is not correct in that C.W. Smith gave himself a raise. There also is a law in Oregon Revised Statute that defines how elected officials are compensated. The Salary Review Committee, which, was, which is a statutorily required committee, reviewed and made the recommendation to the Board of Commissioners who adopted it as part of the budget, the salary set for not just commissioners, but for all elected officials. Uh, Mr. Peterson has disagreed with that in the past and obviously continues to disagree with it, but it was done under and according to Oregon Revised Statute which is a law of our state. <clears throat> um, with regard to the comment regarding subsidized housing and people who have a salary of 200000 I'll take that as being directed at me. And while it's not my job to defend that or not defend it, I will say that I do not receive subsidized housing. I receive a loan from the county, which I pay back with interest to the taxpayers. It's a net gain to the taxpayers of $300,000. It's not an expense. It's booked as a liability and asset in our financial statements. And so that's a whole lot different circumstance than receiving subsidized housing, um, to clarify that. Regarding your ability to freeze taxes as was recommended to you, the law is very clear. Shall be assessed 3% annually in maximum assessed value. You don't have the ability to freeze taxes. That's what gets assessed. That's according to the law that our voters of our state passed. Thank you very much. If this is a this is a, you've had your opportunity to make the comment and under we can't get into discussion or deliberation on this item according to Oregon statute so because it isn't noticed appropriately so as much as we'd like to we're not we're prohibited from doing so I, I'm, I'm just going to comment some of what he said is baloney because I've gone through it and my taxes never went down Even in the time when there was a depression. Mr. Chair, just to give Mr. Peterson credit, it may be true that his taxes didn't went down. I said that the taxes countywide on average went down. Just to explain that, the the county tax base, the, the real market value, used to be about 50% higher than the maximum assessed value. Uh, through the recession and or depression, whichever you want to qualify it as, about 50% of the houses that maximum assessed value dropped below real market value. So there were 50% that didn't, and Mr. Peterson may be one of those homes. I wasn't speaking specifically to his case. Yeah, and then, like you stated earlier, it's a state law that sort of dictates how we're going to do taxation here in Jackson County. We don't have a lot of say in this matter. Uh, next item, person on the agenda today is uh, Colby. You signed up. Olson? Awesome. Watch your guys' meeting yesterday. I was impressed and unimpressed in multiple areas. I um, was very impressed with Commissioner Roberts and her independent investigation of what was going on with the dams out there. I myself have been on site those twice now, and it's a pretty shocking sight. Um, it's a pretty scary sight if you look at before and after pictures. You're looking in an area that used to be completely saturated with water, a couple feet deep at least, 30 feet plus across, for over 300 yards. There is nothing but what looks like if it were there, there isn't one, but it looks like a two-edge culvert coming out with just a water hose in it. I know this was private property. I know that we all understand the situation here. I think the media has kind of miscued this on us last night and hasn't done their due diligence. Um, I think we need to really
really start looking at the fact that although this was private property, this was a privatized agenda. If this was a lawsuit by someone's neighbors, I could see that being completely acceptable. When we have a corporation, as it will be, it, it is a corporation. They go around the state making $50 million a year, taking people's personal property rights from them. That's, that's not what we do here. If it was a neighbor and it was a, a few between neighbors, that's a completely, completely different situation. That's not what we have here. This is extortion of private property owners. This is like me coming to your house and saying, I don't like your tree in the middle of your yard and waking up the next morning and being gone. This is also, um, if you talk to the families, they didn't want this. They had no choice. People shouldn't have their hands tied because they're on a fixed income. And honestly, that gentleman just kind of put the same type of premise forward. The actual notion that because someone couldn't afford to fight someone that makes $50 million a year to maintain their own personal property, and we just kind of walked away from it, is, is kind of, it's sad to me. And I know that personal property is a line that's kind of hard to cross sometimes because if we cross it here, maybe we have to cross it there for our own gain as a county, which can put us in a middleman type of situation. It's, it's a legal situation as well. But the due diligence we need to take going forward with water work, I mean, we already know that they're on the chopping block for other dams in our area that are excessively important for us to maintain rainwater. And it's, I couldn't imagine being those homeowners and waking up one morning and seeing what they see. I don't know if you guys have been out there yourselves, but imagine that being your property. Imagine it. And walking out after having generations of children, and from the owner's mouth themselves, they walked out and burst into tears. And I don't blame them. But we helped issue a permit that violates the Clean Water Act. Obviously, that permit let them get around that. But and it, it, things just move along. Just because you have the money doesn't mean that you have the key to someone else's property. And I think that's something that we really need to look at in this moving forward. Because right now, I don't see any way that we're going to repair fish habitat up there whatsoever. I'm not an environmentally completely sound person, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go up there and actually look and say, where are the fish going to go? Are they going to swim to the rocks? And that's exactly where it's at. The other thing that we need to look at is the way that they did their sampling. Two feet down on a 30-foot dam is atrocious. There was a uranium mine above that dam in the past. What sediment could be coming out of that dam? Two to three feet down when you've got a possible 30 feet to go. It's, it's pretty sad. That, and that really doesn't have anything to do with the county's fault at all. It doesn't. This pursuit forward as a legal matter between private parties. But you can look at it any way you want. The only thing I see here is pretty much extortion. So I thank you guys for your time. I do thank you guys for looking into this. I did watch your, the entirety of your guys' study session yesterday, and I was pretty impressed with it. So thank you guys as always for your time. Thank you, Colby. I know it's a, sometimes it's difficult to watch what happens in, in some of these private properties, but as you talked about, it is a private property right issue. And I will say this, that there's a federal laws on fish passage, environmental protection, uh, clean water, all those things that we have no control of at this county level. And issuing a permit, uh, we don't even have the ability to deny a permit if they meet the criteria that they're supposed to be doing. So. Did we assist in a process? I don't think the county assisted in any process here. Uh, we did what we're required to do. And I would say if you have concerns on those corporations, the environmental corporations, the current federal laws that are in place are what allows that to happen. And we don't have any impact up here in Jackson County to be able to modify that, except go to our congressional leaders uh, like Senator Wyden and Senator Merkley and ask for those changes to happen. So, um, and it, maybe that's where you should be spending some of your focus is asking for those senators to, to go and look at modification because this is the example. And maybe those senators should be seeing those pictures of what's happening and understanding the turbidity and, and I'm sure they'll, they'll talk to who they need to also. But they need to be seeing that. Um, by, we just don't have any authority in Jackson County to intervene in that whole process. OK. 
Okay. The next item on our agenda today is our consent calendar. We, excuse me, is there anybody else that would like to speak? We have two people that signed up. I'm, I apologize, a little remiss asking the audience if there's anybody else. Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move into consent calendar. 